a fruitful session today and tomorrow. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for that, Yusek uh, Zeni. Um, okay, uh, to commemorate this... Uh, okay, it is timely now that uh, Philippine now, Philippine is uh, uh, going to participate actively in the globalization of economy through uh, halal. Uh, I think uh, the trend now is to make halal certification to make it as an institution because you know that the halal institution must have rules and regulation and it must have the purposes that the government must regulate in coordination with the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos and the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Once we have a halal uh, institution, then the Philippines we will become more active uh, in the globalization of economy because uh, halal certification or institution would uh, be a key key to uh, to the muslim world uh, so uh, the muslim world uh, will have to participate in the globalization of economy in the philippines and then uh, in vice versa also the philippines will become active uh, in the globalization of economy in the Muslim world. First of all, I would like to greet everyone in the universal greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be with you all. Under Secretary Sinaida Maglaya of the Regional Operation Group, Ustaz Lokman Pinusman from the University of the Philippines, uh, Director Clint Hassan of the Department of Agriculture, Regional Director Anthony Salis of the Department of Science and Technology. Assistant Secretary Mayra Abuokat of the Department of Tourism. Director Ima Asusano, DPI Negotiation Center. Director Jerry Lapicilias of the DPI Dispatch. His big Secretary General Ilsan Obot, whose garden is Chukta Shakuri Daru. Different representatives from the local government units and individual free. BNC, BNC. Distinguished speakers, colleagues from the government. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to everyone. Magandang mga po. Before starting my presentation, I would like to express my thanks to the organizer of this event. This is part of the second Philippine National Halal Conference, and of course to the Regional Operations Group headed by my idol, Under Secretary Maglaya. Ma'am, thank you. This event aims to introduce Halal to the Regional Offices and the Gosha Centers so that they will be involved in developing this fast-growing industry in our country has every potential to benefit from. I am very pleased to present to you the Philippine Halal Export Development and Promotion Program developed by the Halal Export Board members, of course, chaired by the Department of Trade and Industry. Halal is a combination of religion, technology, and business. Let us take away religion and halal will be synonymous to hygiene, good health, and wellness. Let us look at the other dimension by which halal will drive this market to unprecedented growth. And this attracts even the non-Muslim consumers as well, aside from the captured market with the 2 billion consumer of halal worldwide. When we see halal, we have the assurance that it is healthy, it is hygienic, pure, and of course it is organic. In a sense that 
and natural ingredients are not able to clean. It is also environment friendly because it, is, it does not promote hazardous to the environment such as harmful chemicals. It also looks after animal welfare through proper slaughtering. We make sure that animals don't suffer too much pain. It also promotes fair trade. When we see one kilo, it cannot be 0.9 kilo. When we say it is fresh, it must be fresh. And we are not allowed to make a false claim because it will not make it halal. The market drivers of the growth of the halal industry can be identified as being the global Muslim population. As mentioned, the 2 billion Muslim all over the world is the captured market, and most of them are found among our neighbors, like Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei, and the GCC country, and I'm referring to Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Oman, Bahrain, and of course, Turkey, Pakistan, and so many uh, Muslim countries, the 57 organization of Islamic countries. In the Philippines alone, it is estimated to be more than 11 million Filipino Muslim today, and it's increasingly rapidly. In joke nila, ang Muslim daw lalim gumadami kasi allow the apat. The population does not necessarily translate for to sales and look at the demographics of this population. Global, sur global surveys on the richest people in the world say that many of them are Muslim and are young. And this means that they have the same and of course they have the influence on the market. Another driver of the growth of the halal industry are the changes in consumer demand, especially in the Philippines. We are now leaning towards healthier lifestyle and healthier options in terms of food and beverages. Halal is a perfect alternative for that. For example, the primary causes of heart diseases and other illnesses and the world are the excessive meat, alcohol, and cigarette. And these are all prohibited under halal law. There are also prohibited in the non-halal. That is why halal is an emerging trend and is the sound solution to this uh, Prohibit, uh, prohibited uh, products. Another big factor for the growth is the technological innovations. And we are all familiar how technology works, reinforced by globalization and economic integration. The halal industry has moved into a far growing market. Logistics play a major role. And with the help of technology, the world is becoming smaller and closer. And let us take a look at the global halal economy. According to the Global Islamic Economy Report in 2017, the halal food is a leading sector. In 2016, it was reported that halal food values at 1.4 trillion US dollar. This is not in billion, but trillion. And it is expected to reach at 1.9 trillion US dollar industry. Right now, we have around 145 billion Muslim regular tourists all over the world. 
and we have a very limited facility where they can pray. And of course, this regular Muslim tourists, they choose Singapore, Japan, and some other non-Muslim countries because these countries have a Muslim friendly food and services available. This is a challenge for us. If you want to get a bigger slice of pie in the halal industry, we have to do something. We also have the market for the halal pharmaceuticals, media and recreation, and the Islamic finance. I will focus on the Islamic finance. Islamic finance and Islamic commercial banking combined, we have more than 3 trillion US dollar in 2016. More than 6 trillion US dollar by 2022. Remember the halal value chain? It means that from the start to end, from sources, the capital, production to the finished product, it should be halal. So the capital and how you spend the money should comply with the principle of Islamic finance and banking. Just recently, the bicameral Congress has passed into law the Bill of Islamic Finance and Banking. It is now submitted to the President for his signature. It means that we will be having our regulatory framework to have our Islamic finance system. And this would allow our banks to have a window for Islamic finance. This way, we will be able to fund our halal industry using the halal compliant finance. And this is another big market waiting to be explored. Let's look at which the countries that are benefiting from this halal industry. For halal food, Islamic finance and travel, Malaysia dominates. And the United Arab Emirates tops the industry of the modest fashion, media, and recreation, and the pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. You are wondering, how do you halalize the media or the recreation? Media and recreation can be halalized in terms of the content and sportswear. Where is the Philippines in all of this? Obviously, we are not in the list. You will argue why, of course. Because Philippines is a non, we are not a Muslim country. But look at the ranking. Are Brazil, Australia, Singapore, Thailand, China, United Kingdom, Germany, France, a Muslim country? Of course, they are not also Muslim countries. But because they understand the need, they have realized the potential of this market and they initiate, innovate, and venture on halal. What I am pointing here, ladies and gentlemen, is that there is a lot of things that we can do about halal. In all fairness, we are progressing inch by inch and we are on the right path together with all the line agencies helping is other for the development of our halal industry. Realizing this potential, the Congress passed into law the Republic Act 10817, the Philippine Halal Export Development and Promotion Act. And this law refers to the comprehensive set of objectives, targets, strategies, and activities for the growth of halal industries producing or providing products, processes, 
and services and resulting in increased exports of halal products. The law has key features, which I will cluster into four. First is to develop a halal standard that, that are recognized internationally. Second is to have a single accreditation body that will make sure that halal certification body in the Philippines will comply with internationally accepted accreditation standard. And the third is the expansion of markets. What is known to us is only halal food. But this new law paves the way for us to explore and expand our halal markets to include the halal services, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and even the halal clothing. And the fourth is to support international bilateral agreements, especially on the harmonization of standard for halal. This way, we will establish mutual recognition arrangement with our target exports to facilitate more trade, which we hope will ultimately increase our total exports. We have presented earlier potential and actual market for halal. We also have underscored the government's effort to partake and gain the bigger slice of buy in the global halal market. Under the law, we have the Halal Export Development Promotion Board, where the Department of Trade and Industry as the chair. That is why most of the activities related to halal are being spearheaded by the Department of Trade and Industry. We have also the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos as the vice chair to oversee the religious side of the industry. We have the Department of Agriculture to take care of the production side. And the Department of Health for the pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and personal care. As presented earlier, we have a huge market for the pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and personal care. The Department of Science and Technology to take care of the research and development, which could include laboratories dedicated for halal. The Department of Foreign Affairs for the multilateral and bilateral agreements and the Department of Tourism, obviously for the halal services sector. And we have also the Banco Central na Pilipinas for the financial and the Mindanao Development Authority for the Mindanao Concern. To make sure that the private sector is represented and the Halal Export Board, there are two board members from the private sector and we aim to inclusive growth. So we consider the representation from the private sector. This is a strategic framework we have developed for the Halal Philippines. Our strategic goal is to make the Philippines a respectable player in the global Halal ecosystem. And this is our target as a result of the series of consultations and meetings among the nine government agencies and other stakeholders, especially the religious group. There are three major support programs we need to do. And we need the negotiable centers. First is to see where your respective region could come in. Number one is to develop the local halal industry. Number two is to institutionalize a knowledge 
management system. Right now, to be honest with you, we have no accurate data for Halal. The data I presented are only indicative. Number three is to strengthen the consumer awareness and protection for the domestic halal, precisely because we want to be respected player and will continue to force our integrity locally. That's why we invited our religious, the ulama sectors uh, this, uh, in this conference. We have also ensured the convergence of effort to address the gap in the halal value chain. And this is because the halal export member agencies have a different mandate and we have to align them to address the gaps in the halal value chain. Our activity today and the tomorrow is part of our effort to unify and fortify the inclusive growth. And we, when we achieve this, this job creation, investment, and revenues will happen inevitably. And ultimately, we will strengthen the culture halal as a way of life. Let us take a look at our quick wins in the product and services. In terms of food, we have the advantage on banana, pineapple, mango, coconut, calamansi, pili, masturbado, sugar, the processed fisheries and carotene. For non-food, we have the advantage on pharmaceuticals, personal care and cosmetics and the medical devices, and of course, the Islamic fashion. For the services, we can compete in the Muslim-friendly tourism and logistics. We have also the three modes of intervention. First, the advocacy and global export advancement. We are working on making our halal industry globally competitive by adhering and complying with international standard. And this is very crucial as we position ourselves to be a significant player in the global halal ecosystem. Second is the program support, where we can capacity, we can cap, cap, we have we can do the capacity building activities such as information session with the various stakeholders providing shared service facilities like the slaughterhouses, laboratories for the halal and creating halal hubs. Lastly, is the marketing and promotion. We do inbound and outbound business mission in support of halal. We promote our companies the Philippine halal products to countries that require halal, such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, and the 57 organization of Islamic countries. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Again, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, thank you so much, Undersecretary Makatoman, for that insightful introduction of the halal industry market. So, ano po ba ang ta asaho lang ini-expect ng mga nag-participate? Opo, uh, yung ini-expect po dito ng uh, mga nag-participate, like yung recipient, ano, yung mga magiging benefit, like yung mga exporters ng halal product, yung mga would-be exporters, producer, manufacturer ng halal product, talagang tutulungan po natin sila ma uh, i-connect yung mga Philippine halal products natin, natin dito sa Pilipinas sa uh, the whole um, global halal market. Uh, as I have said, yung captured market ng halal, 2 billion uh, halal consumer dito lamang sa Pilipinas, 11 million uh, Muslim uh, uh, halal consumer. So, yun po yung napakalaking uh, advantage natin na 
ang iba't ibang uh, member ng Halal Board ay uh, tulong-tulong dito. Yung mga uh, panguna po ng Department of Trade and Industry, na dyan ay NCMF, DA, National uh, Department of Health, Department of Tourism. Tulong-tulong po kami rito at uh, kasama na dyan yung uh, mga LGUs. Ngayon po, marami na rin pong mga local government units na talagang nagpapasa sila ng mga city ordinance na suportahan itong halal kasi nakikita nila yung potensyal. Yung paano natin maakit yung regular Muslim tourists, the 145 million regular tourists na pumunta sila dito sa atin sa Pilipinas. Napakadaming tanawin dito na pwedeng puntahan pero ang challenge natin dyan ay hindi pa ganun karami yung mga establishment natin, hotel, restaurant na halal compliant. Hindi man siya fully halal compliant, at least a Muslim friendly uh, establishment. Ano po ang medyo masasabi nating uh, mas nadagdag ngayon na kaalaman o nadagdag ngayon information para sa mga tao na maaaring mag-elevate pa sa kasi nasasabi ng marami na nasa early stage pa tayo ng halal industry. So second na po to, ano ang mga advancement na meron na tayo pagdating sa halal na industry? Ngayon po ay uh, natapos na rin yung National uh, Halal Certification Scheme natin at saka yung unified uh, halal logo natin. Dati kasi iba-iba yung mga halal logo. So ngayon, unified na po yan. Lahat ng mga Philippine halal products na i-export natin ay unified na yung mga gagamitin na logo. So, uh, yan ay napakalaking uh, achievement natin bagamat uh, tayo ay baguhan sa halal. Pero nakikita naman natin like yung uh, awareness natin, tapos na tayo dyan sa awareness. Pero nakakapacitate na rin natin yung mga uh, producer, manufacturer natin ng mga Philippine halal products. In fact, kagagaling lang natin sa Malaysia, nagparticipate tayo doon sa Malaysia International Halal Showcase kung saan nakabenta tayo doon ng 12 million US dollars na mga Philippine halal products at 3 uh, months ago nakapag-participate din tayo doon sa Gold Food uh, sa Dubai at sa loob ng tatlong araw nakabenta tayo ng 83 million dollars na mga Philippine halal products so napakalaki po ang improvement kung tuloy-tuloy po ito ay uh, Uh, this can open a floodgate of opportunity, hindi lamang doon sa misconception na mga kababayan natin na ang halal daw ay para sa mga Muslim, hindi po. Ang halal po ay para sa lahat. At, uh, opo. Ayun, uh, nasabi niyo po na na-draft na po yung logo. Hmm. Is this a sign po na we are waiting na may mga certification body po na mabibigyan na ng accreditation from DP? Yes, definitely po. Uh, yung mga competent halal certifying body natin na SIAM ay uh, ma-accredit na po natin yan soon, very soon. Kasi po may ginagawa na po kami ngayon na uh, guideline na talagang gusto natin sila ma-accredit para sa ganun ay tuloy-tuloy yung integrity, yung ating um, uh, makapacitate natin yung mga halal certifying bodies. In fact, dito nga sa pagpunta na, pag-participate natin sa halal uh, Malaysia International Halal Showcase, kinakampi natin sa Malaysia kasi tatatlo lamang yung kanilang uh, uh, recognized doon na sana naman lahat ng siyam. Kaya yan ang pinapaliwanag natin sa lahat ng mga halal certifying body na hindi nyo po kami kalaban, kakampi nyo kami sa Department of Trade and Industry na gusto namin yung interna, international recognition ng mga uh, certification, halal certifying body natin ay lahat ng country ay maging recognized po sila. Uh, last na lang po, uh, message po, general po para sa lahat ng mga uh, sabi na natin na mga gustong pumasok sa halal industry. Opo, uh, tayo po ay nagpapasalamat at uh, napakaganda ang uh, response ng mga kababayan natin at doon po sa mga existing producer, manufacturer ng mga produkto na hindi pa sila halal. Sana intindihin ninyo ang uh, halal at uh, dahil uh, bagkos kung mayroon kayong existing market, lalo po madadagdagan yung inyong merkado dahil Ma magiging market ninyo itong 2 billion uh, halal consumer all over the world. At uh, kung maintindihan nyo po yan, lalong madadagdagan po yung inyong uh, merkado. Kahit po mga non-Muslim ngayon ay tinatangkilik na. They are now clamoring for the halal because napakataas po ng uh, antas ng um, uh, standard ng halal product. So tayo, nagpapasalamat po tayo sa ating mga kababayan at yung mga hindi pa nakakaintindi, sana intindihin natin at yung mga producer 
uh, napakalaking market po ito at uh, madadagdagan lalo yung mga yung customer ninyo at yung inyong market. Madadagdagan po pagka naging halal yung mga produkto ninyo. Okay, Jazakallah po. Upon you, upon you, be peace.